I ain't never been able to drop no shadow. Hey Power Director Peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today I'm going to be bringing you the drop shadow effect using Power Director and a plugin called New Blue Effects. Now, if you like New Blue Effects plugins and you think they're all out in a bag of chips, I want you to go ahead and leave a comment below with the hashtag I love me some new blue. Alright guys, I know you're waiting to see this effect, so let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 16. Today, I'm going to show you how to apply a drop shadow to an object. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's drop some shadows on them. The drop shadow effect is used with objects that have a transparent background, such as a chroma keyed green screen video, or a picture with a transparent background like a .png image. As you can see, I have two clips on my timeline. On track one, I have the background video of two individuals kayaking on a lake. And on track two, I have a .png image with a transparent background of Cupid. Now, you can see through this and obviously everything in back of Cupid is visible. If I were to disable track one by clicking on this little check mark here, you will just see Cupid and a bunch of black around Cupid. All of that black around Cupid is transparent and therefore, when track one is enabled again, like so, it's clicking on this little box here. You're able to see the background behind Cupid. Now I'm going to go ahead and resize the clip of Cupid so that it's the same length as the background video. So I'm going to left click on Cupid or the clip that has Cupid in it. I'm going to place my cursor at the end until I see two arrows. I'm going to hold on my left mouse. And I'm going to drag this out until it snaps into place here. And this line turns blue. The playhead line is now blue. I can let this go. And that means that it is the exact same length as the background clip above it. Now I want to go ahead and make Cupid do what I want her to do. So I'm going to left click on Cupid to make sure that Cupid is selected. I'm going to come up here to designer. And then I'm going to go to PIP designer. And I want to make sure that this playhead is at the beginning of the clip. So I'm going to drag this all the way over to the left and put it at the beginning. And now I want to resize Cupid. So I'm going to come here to the scale section. Well, the first section is object settings. So if that's not open, make sure that you click on this and open up object settings. And then I'm going to come down to the scale section and I want to make Cupid the size that I want Cupid to be. So I already know that that's the size I want her. So I just typed it in. You could use the carrot here and move it back and forth to slide it to the size you want. Or you can place your cursor over any of these nodes until you see a line with two arrows and you can drag it and change the size that way. All right, but that's the size I want. So now what I want to do is I want to actually move Cupid along with the people who are kayaking so that Cupid is moving with them. But also I want to rotate Cupid so that she keeps the uh, bow and arrow pointed at the man. Okay. Cause she's trying to shoot this fool and make him fall in love. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I can see position and I'm going to click on the add a keyframe here for position. And then I'm going to type in the position that I want once again, you can go ahead and move Cupid to your position. 
but I know where I want her. So I'm just going to type in those parameters. Once again, you can just place your cursor here until you see a crosshair that so you can drag Cupid or your object wherever you want. Just hold on your left mouse and drag it wherever you want. Now, the next thing I want to do is scroll down to the rotation section and I'm going to click on this. And when I do, you'll see here, I'm going to scroll down that there is now a keyframe here where it says rotation. And you can place your cursor over this green dot until you see the two circular objects or two circular arrows. Hold on your left mouse and rotate, keep it how you want. Once again, I know the exact position that I want it rotated to. So I'm just going to type it in and hit enter and I'm good to go there. So now what you want to do is you want to move your playhead to the next location where you think you need to adjust Cupid again. And that's good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe for position again. I'm going to type in the position I want. And I'm going to come down to rotation and do the same thing. So you can continue to do this and move this along and add your keyframes and everything. I'm not going to talk through this because this is very repetitive, but I'll keep doing it. I'll just speed it up and I'll see you guys back here in a few seconds. Okay, I think I got all the keyframes I want, so I'm gonna drag my playhead back to the beginning, and I'm just gonna play this to see how it looks. All right, it looks pretty good, but there's still no shadow. No shadow. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Because now that I have all of the movement put together, I need to add the drop shadow. All right. So I'm going to go to the effects room. And I'm going to go down to New Blue Essentials Effect 4. And I'm going to go to new blue drop shadow. I'm going to hold down my left mouse. And I'm going to drag this effect on top of this clip and I'm going to let it go. Now, some people drag it to the effect track. You don't need to, you can drag it right to the clip if you want to have it applied to the entire clip. So now that I have this applied to this clip, you can see that there's a drop shadow, but the shadow's not going the right way. The shadows actually should be going in the like towards down towards that direction. So what I'm going to do is I need to go ahead and make some adjustments to the shadow. So I'm going to click on effect and it opens up the settings for the new blue drop shadow. And you got a default here. If you hit this drop down, there's several different options you can choose from here. If you want to different presets that you can apply to it. Um, but I'm just going to go through the regular parameters and make adjustments and tell you what they're about. So the first one here is offset. So offset sets the distance of the shadow from the object. And I'm going to set mine to 60 and hit enter. Now you could use a slider. Once again, if you don't know where you want it to be, you can use a slider, but I know what I want. So I just typed in 60. The next one here is blur. And blur controls the width of the blurring. So I'm going to change this to 25. And then the next option we have here is angle and angle sets the direction of the shadow from the object. So I'm going to go to 75 and hit enter. And now the shadow is 
going downwards like I want it. And then the next section is opacity. So this sets the visibility of the shadow itself and the border of the shadow. So I'm going to set this one to 125. And then last but not least, we have the color. And so the color is just like I said, the color. If I click on that, I can go ahead and use these uh, basic colors here. Of course, black is probably one of the best or gray. But for me, I'm going to type in the parameters. I want kind of like a grayish color here. So I'm going to do the RGB values that I want on here. 35, 40 for green and 47 for blue. And that is more of a grayish instead of black. I think that blends in very, very well. And now I can go ahead and close this out and keep in mind, if you wanted to like have the shadow move, you could use keyframes to move the shadow, uh, different angles and stuff like that too. So keep that in mind. I almost forgot that for this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the X to close this out. And now you'll see a beautiful drop shadow anywhere that Cupid roams. All right, Pat with Director Peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, Guitar Chick. Guitar Chick makes videos of her playing the guitar and singing some melodious tunes over on her channel. So if you're into seeing that female, that girl power, playing the guitar, singing those songs, doing her thing, check out a couple of her videos. If you're feeling what she's doing, make sure that you subscribe to her channel. If you're a subscriber to Power Director University and you want to get a shout out like Guitar Chick did, make sure that you head over to our video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you're a subscriber to Power Director University and you want to make a tutorial request, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with all of that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click it. It lets people know that the content in this video was good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk and chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. That way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.